Donald Trump has now made his official selection for his vice presidential running mate. Donald Trump's VP pick is the MAGA Republican senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, who previously made the following statements about Donald Trump. Quote, I'm a never Trump guy. Quote, I never liked him. Terrible candidate. You are an idiot if you voted for him. He might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical asshole, cultural uh, heroine, noxious and reprehensible. Um, those are some of the statements that J.D. Vance has made about Donald Trump, but he is the VP pick. His background is he grew up in Ohio, uh, went to law school, and then worked for a big corporate law firm, Sidley Austin, before he became a venture capitalist in San Francisco, worked at Peter Thiel's firm in San Francisco, um, and then was kind of pushed to go back to Ohio, where he started a fake sham charity claiming that it would be helping uh, people who were uh, suffering from opioid addictions and those who lost loved ones, although no money ever really went uh, to uh, actually helping the problem, ended up really just paying for political advisors for J.D. Vance. We'll go over all that here. Let's just break down um, some things that J.D. Vance has said, just so everybody knows who this individual is. First, let's show you clips of what J.D. Vance really thinks about Donald Trump here. Van says that he believes Trump is leading the American people in a dark direction. Play the clip. Here, J.D. Van says that Donald Trump exploits racism and people's fears. Play the clip. I think what Trump is not just doing, I mean, certainly he's exploiting some of the racism that's there, but he's also exploiting people's fears and pointing it in a direction that maybe they wouldn't go on their own. So I, I think it's it's both that Trump is drawing on something, but more importantly, I think that he's leading people in a very dark direction, and that's ultimately what worries me the most. Here, uh, J.D. Vance uh, mocks Donald Trump when he went on uh, the Chris Matthews show. Play the clip. What do you think of this? This is sort of, back, you know, it's sort of interesting evocative of the time because we used to say stewardess, first of all, now we say flight attendant, but just it gives you that sense of history. But this woman is not a show off. She's just telling what happened so we can know it. Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of, it, it makes you think that at, at, at a fundamental level, this is sort of a he said, she said, right? And at the end of the day, do you believe Donald Trump, who always tells the truth? Just kidding. Or do you believe that woman on that tape? No, denial. Denial. Denial is normal. And, and, and I. Uh, J.D. Vance had previously been asked uh, by Fox and others about the statements that he made about Donald Trump and kind of flip flopping his position now. Here, play this clip. This is an evolution, and I know you've been asked about this before, about past comments that you've made about Donald Trump. Uh, you've said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him, terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, noxious and reprehensible. Those are things. It's another clip where J.D. Vance was confronted with his prior positions about Donald Trump being a reprehensible individual who is American's Hitler. Let's be clear, that's what Donald Trump's running mate said about Donald Trump here. Play this clip. Lengthy piece on you yesterday. Uh, talked about your relationship to the Trumps. Um, they, they talk about your evolution from calling him loathsome and an idiot to somebody who frankly is being uh, floated as a VP pick to join his ticket. Here's a sample of that piece. David Frum, a Trump critic and a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, who's known Vance for years, described the senator as an intelligent man with an extraordinary life story who has, quote, sunk to the depths of political degradation. Washington Post says you're going to the same negative place that you once criticized Trump for going. Now, he's not changed over the last few years. He's the same guy we've been knowing right. for a long time. So what's changed with you? that you're okay with the behavior and you're supporting him and maybe joining his ticket. So ultimately what changed? Well, J.D. Vance kissed Donald Trump's ass and that's not my phrasing of it. That's what Donald Trump said in the 2022 uh, midterm elections when J.D. Vance was running for Senate for the first time. Um, Donald Trump gave a speech in Ohio and he mocked J.D. Vance's prior positions and says, yep, now J.D. Vance has to kiss my ass here. Play this clip. J.D. is kissing my ass. He wants my support. Up. I think he's running J.D. on an I love Donald Trump policy. Yeah, he said some bad things about me, but that was before he knew me and then he fell in love. Are we having a good time? Is it great to have the president back in Ohio? <laughs> JP, right? JD Mandel. Let's talk more about JD Vance's positions so you know who he is. 
This is what he's previously said about Alex Jones. He says, Alex Jones is a far more reputable source of information than Rachel Maddow. One of them is censored by the regime. The other is promoted by it after Alex Jones was hit with a defamation verdict. Um, one of the things that J.D. Vance is often called is Putin's best friend, Putin's favorite senator other than Tommy Tuberville, or perhaps they're tied. Um, J.D. Vance wants no support of Ukraine um, by, American and, by America and by NATO, literally parrots Putin's talking points now. Here's just one such clip of J.D. Van saying, I don't care about Ukraine. Play the clip. Country. And I think it's ridiculous that we're focused on this border in Ukraine. Uh, I don't I got to be honest with you. I don't really care what happens to Ukraine one way or another. J.D. Vance voted against IVF. This is the moment where that happened. Play this clip. It's on tape on the Senate floor. Mr. Vance, Mr. Vance. No. J.D. Vance says that he's against the Marriage Equality Act. Play the clip. Outgoing Senator Rob Portman is co-sponsoring the Marriage Equality Act that will codify same-sex marriage. Are you ready to support that bill? Why or why not? Mr. Vance, we start with you. Yeah, so I've come out against this bill, and I don't think it's actually about gay marriage. It's not about same-sex marriage or same-sex equality. Uh, in a previous debate that he had, uh, J.D. Vance talked about... Uh, that he would support some form of national abortion ban. Play the clip. On the Lindsey Graham bill, my view on this is, generally speaking, Ohio is going to want to have different abortion laws than California, than Texas, and I think, abor I think Ohio should have that right. But some minimum national standard is totally fine with me. We're talking about five-month-old babies. J.D. Vance said uh, previously that the biggest issue for Donald Trump in the 2024 election is exposing the truth about January 6th and showing that it's a hoax. So J.D. Vance is here, play this clip. Here, that's a very good, that's, that's maybe the most important thing that he needs to do on, on, on when he's elected president. Look, look, th th here's some, something that's crazy about this. We still don't know who planted the pipe bomb at the RNC. Do you remember that? That, that was headline news for all of about four hours, okay? A pipe bomb was planted, we have video of it, and the FBI is more concerned about a seven-year-old grandmother who was walking through the halls of the Capitol than a person who apparently tried to blow up the RNC. It's insane. Yeah, th 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 this is crazy stuff. So I think the most important thing actually is what the, this, this woman over here said, is actually releasing all the footage and empowering, forcing maybe, the federal agencies to actually look into this stuff. And this, this also when there would be important legislation and attempts to try to fund the government, J.D. Vance would try to block important initiatives by reading Dr. Seuss on the Senate floor. Play the clip. Waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape. All that waiting and staying, you'll find the bright places where the boom bands are playing. With banner flip-flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky. Uh, J.D. Vance, who's now taking the role of Mike Pence, who was the victim of attempted uh, assassination um, based on Donald Trump's conduct and rhetoric. J.D. Vance, though, says that he's skeptical that Mike Pence was really in danger on January 6th. Here, play the clip. The last time I checked, President Biden you know, wasn't approval approving of the chance to hang his vice president and did not call his vice president when their life was in danger on Capitol Hill, something that Mike Pence himself has testified to. So my question is, does it give you any pause to be his vice president, given how he has treated Mike Pence? Caitlin, I'm extremely skeptical uh, that Mike Pence's life was ever in danger. I think politics and politics people like to uh, really exaggerate things from time to time. I, I know Mike a lot Pence of folks in the Democratic with Party. That, Senator. A lot of folks in the Democratic Party, Caitlin, act as if January the 6th was the scariest moment of their lives. Uh, I think. And as I mentioned at the outset of this uh, video, um, there's the fake charity. So when J.D. Vance moved back to Ohio, he was. Um, you know, he was the Silicon Valley tech guy, 
you know, who had made millions of dollars. He was a corporate guy. So he wanted to show that he was with the Ohio people. So one of the ways he did this was by creating this um, cha sham charity that he claimed was going to deal with the opioid uh, epidemic. Um, and let me just show you, as uh, this is from the Columbus Dispatch, talked about how he was a venture capitalist. He worked with all these special interests. He came back to Ohio, started an organization called Our Ohio Renewal to fight opioid addiction, but it hasn't done any of that, according to nonprofit experts like Doug White and others who said that the entire charity is a charade, a superficial way for him to say he's helping Ohio. Um, roughly half of the money um, had gone to a political strategist who was advising Vance's Senate campaign, so a way to funnel money to his Senate campaign. Um, some of the funds also donated went to political polls um, to uh, help J.D. Vance's political career. And then they also hired uh, Dr. Sally Satel, who is a senior fellow from the American enterprise that had ties with Purdue Pharmaceuticals, the makers of the OxyContin. So they, and so the person who was on the, and the opioid, anti-opioid charity, the sham charity created by J.D. Vance, believes that addiction is the result of behavior and environment as opposed to the ingestion of addictive pain pills. So he actually funded research to help Purdue Pharma. Um, so that's who Donald Trump picked. Um, and although I, you know, am uh, quite disappointed in some of the statements that Tim Ryan has made recently. This was a moment from the debate uh, that Tim Ryan had when he lost to J.D. Vance in 2022, but he does make a good point here about J.D. Vance's uh, sham charity. Here, play the clip. Border Patrol, why, why I vote for a barrier, why I vote for technology and started the Border Technology Caucus. So that's what I have done. You know what I haven't done? I didn't start a fake nonprofit pretending like I was going to help people with addiction like J.D. Vance did. Literally started a nonprofit and didn't spend one nickel on anybody. In fact, he brought in somebody from Purdue Pharma to be the spokesperson for the nonprofit. The same drug company, Big Pharma, the big drug company that had all the pill mills going, got everybody addicted. Mm. One million people died, J.D., one million people died and you started a nonprofit to try to take advantage of people in Ohio. And you know what? All you did with it was launch your political career. His so, campaign manager worked for that nonprofit. He ran a poll to check his own standing from that nonprofit. I'm not going to take a backseat to you or anybody else on fentanyl drugs or immigration or anything else. No, Somebody that would what kind no, of man would start a fake nonprofit thank you, to try to deal no, with addiction by the, by the and way, not spend any money on anybody? No. So there you have it, folks. Um, J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's vice presidential uh, running mate. We'll keep you posted with more. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.